This is a glazing demonstration. So after your pieces have been bisked and uh, some ugly little pinch pots that have been bisked, bisque fired, you now have the option, if you'd like, um, of sanding anything a little bit smoother. This is the time to do that. When you are working with your bisque ware, you really want to keep it nice and clean or it will affect the way your glazes adhere to the surface of your pot, your tile, what have you. Avoid using any lotions while you're working your bisque ware. If you use any lotions, wash your hands before you touch your piece. If you do choose to sand your piece, be sure to wipe off the clay dust with a damp sponge. Bisqued clay is very absorbent and glazes dry really quickly. So you're going to want to pour some of the glaze that you're working with in a cup. This is gloss black. And as you can see, it's sort of more of a gray color. I'm going to do this on the inside of my pot. A lot of you have tea kettles that you can't really see inside of and you might find that you would do best pouring your glaze into your teapot. You're gonna pour from your small cup inside. You're gonna pour and then just sort of twirl all around so you make sure you get all of the inside surface especially with a container that's meant to hold liquid, you don't want to miss anything. I would just pour it back into your little cup. The great thing about glazes is that they're water-based, so they're really easy to clean up. Say I don't like how much glazes come over the edge of my little pot, I can just wipe that off with a damp sponge. I'm going to brush the outside of my pot with the sage glaze, which when it is fired will look like this. There's a key here. If you want to know what your glaze will look like, consult the key. Hopefully by the time you go to glaze, there will be a key for each color. Need to keep a little container of water near where I'm working as the glaze will start to dry up. It's another reason I'm putting it in a little cup so I can mix it up, keep it the right consistency. So it's really important, especially when you're brushing, to really apply a thick layer and get in all of the little crevices. We have different size bamboo brushes. Try to choose the right size brush for the job. You might find that you need to go back and add a second layer. When you brush, which is fine, you can wait until the glaze dries. The one thing that you want to be careful about is to not have any glaze on the very bottom of your pot, your container, the resting surface needs to be completely devoid of glaze or it will adhere to the kiln. It will ruin the kiln and your piece. So you can sponge off any glaze that gets on there. We also have little stilts. We only have a couple of them that you can use if there is glaze on the bottom of your piece if it's really important to have glaze there to keep it off of the kiln. Painting a second coat of glaze on the outside of this container. Another neat thing that you can do when you glaze is a method, if you have an interesting texture, you can brush on a darker glaze, make sure that it gets inside all of the crevices, and then take your damp sponge and wipe the surface, leaving your dark glaze only in the crevices and then you can brush over with a lighter glaze.
if you wipe too much, you'll wipe the glaze right out of the crevices. Sort of a balance to figure it out. Now that the black on this is mostly dried, I'm gonna add um, some of my sage over top. And I don't need to wipe this. I can just add it. Add a little water to my glaze, it's getting dry. Brush hair in my glaze. I'm trying to get that out. 